Hi, I'm Tim Kilduff, and this is Business Matters. Business Matters is HCAM's show focusing not only on businesses in Hopkinton, but more importantly, the people who run and manage them. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm very happy that uh, we're going to be talk to, uh, talking to Dennis uh, Cates today, the, the owner, proprietor, uh, leading force uh, at, at Hopkins and Drug. And so sa thanks for taking the time. And I want to jump right in quick because there's so many things we can talk about. But um, I want to, I just ran across this the other day, uh, a story about Hopkins and Drug among America's top independent digital pharmacies. Mm -hmm. I think that sounds like a big deal to me. And uh, this was an, an award recognized by Digital Pharmacist Inc. Can you Talk to me a little bit about uh, about that. Well, uh, so this uh, opportunity uh, came along. This uh, digital pharmacist is a platform for people to be able to have mobile access to their prescription uh, records or be able to reorder prescriptions uh, on their mobile phones without really having to call into the pharmacy and go through the various menus. And nobody seems to like our menus. Because uh, you said if you want to, <laughs> if you want to speak to this person, you know, press one. If you want to speak to that person, press two. And nobody seems to like that. They seem to think it, everybody thinks it, think it's too long. So uh, it's one way to avoid that. Uh, it saves a lot of time. It saves a lot of time for us, and it saves a lot of time for the patients. So um, it's a platform we jumped on and uh, early on, and uh, I guess we're the top ten. One of the top ten. I, th I think that's great. I think one of the one of the challenges. Um, Maybe not a challenge, but one of the things that's uh, of interest to me is we've had businesses that have been in town for a long time, and I think there, some of us take it for granted, uh, the, the, the services and, and the history of some of those businesses. And uh, I'm wondering when, uh, when Hopkins and Drug got started. I mean, just that basic okay. starting. I, I don't think people know that. Okay. Well, uh, my father uh, was uh, working in um, Dorchester. I believe it was Dorchester. That's where his, his, he lived with his uh, uh, with uh, my mother at that point. They had just been married. Um, they started the Hopkins and Drug in 1954, so I was two years old. According to the stories, he opened the store with me in his arms. Um, <laughs> The only entrance was the corner entrance, just so you know, the, uh, the, the, main, and, the main and Cedar Street entrance. Uh, there were three businesses in that block. There was the Hopkinton Drug, uh, there was uh, a, a convenience store, uh, and there was a barber shop. And, um, oh, and there was also a taxi. Uh, so where the uh, dry cleaners is now, right next to where, C where Colellas used to be, um, there was a um, Hitchings Hardware, and Hitchings used to run the taxi cab. And it was just a just a cubby hole, a, barely wide enough to for you, for you, the, the width of your shoulders to you know to get in there. But that's what, that's where we worked out of, and raised a family, and eventually purchased the hardware store and worked hard. And he was the community transportation. He was just a wonderful human being. Wow. And by the way, a, a, a decorated uh, World War II hero. He used to uh, maintain the uh, planes on the aircraft carriers. Uh, in World War II, and he used to have you know model planes hanging from his, uh, his store. And uh, when some of the veterans went in, there was a, there was a camaraderie. I, as a little boy, as a, as a little boy, I could I could see that. How did how did your dad end up in uh, in Hopkins? Inn? I think he responded to an ad. It was a really? uh, it was an ad in the newspaper, and uh, the town of Hopkinton was looking for a pharmacy, and he responded, and um, uh, that's that's how we got here. That's an, an early economic development initiative, an yeah. ad in the paper. Yeah. And it had to, have, I would assume it had to have been a Boston paper. I believe it was. I believe, I believe it was the Globe. Wow. Dennis, you mentioned the fact that uh, when your dad came to Hopkins and bought the store, he carried you in mm -hmm. in his arms. You, you must have been involved in the store in very, very early on in your own career. Sure. Um, I remember, uh, first of all, you know, running into the store to get an ice cream cone because we used to have a fountain. Uh, oh, wow. There used to be, uh, oh, I think, 10, 10, 10 or 12 stools we would offer. We had off uh, coffee and sandwiches and, uh, you know, back then we sold cigarettes. Uh, cigarettes were actually considered a health item back then. 
Uh, but to answer your question, yes, I was always involved and I was always interested and I wanted to be with my father. So uh, that was the best way to work with him. So that's, the mo that's, that's an interesting motive. Um, you wanted to be with your dad. I did. In terms of the education development, how did, how did you... Um, how did you launch? You went to you went to high school and did, did, what then? Well, actually, it's, a, it's actually an interesting question. I was not a good student. Uh, I never was, and um, uh, I. But I did want to, you know, have my father's admiration, and um, he encouraged me to, to study. Um, and eventually, I, I did improve, and uh, I wanted to be like him, and I knew at. Eight, eight, seven, eight. I knew this guy was going to go into pharmacy. I just knew it. And you know, it's interesting that you say that you're not a good student because I don't perceive you, you, the, the discussions you and I have have I have had about um, the work that you're doing now and the detail and the the scientific backgrounds and that sort of thing. Uh, it it doesn't match with the, I'm not a good student. Well, maybe maybe I'm hard on myself. Ah, uh, okay, all right. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah. But well, that's a that's a you know, and that's I think that's a quality that doesn't come out um, enough, quite frankly. If I might be so bold, I think there there are things that you do in the community that I want to ultimately get to uh, in our discussion. That um, I think you do because it's the right thing to do, uh, not necessarily looking for uh, self uh, self recognition. I think there's a lot of that stuff goes on that goes on behind the scenes, and it's it's sort of the theme that I'm sensing more and more about the old, uh, older, more well-established businesses that continue to contribute to the community. Mm -hmm. You know, you do something, for example, uh, around the holidays. Mm -hmm. uh, wh how did that start? Um, how did that start? I think. Uh, well, first of all, uh, uh, my present wife, her name is Terry Anthony. Um, but there was a previous wife, and the previous wife, her name was Karen, and um, she was involved in the um, gift store, and she wanted something uh, to help attract people, and she says, you make good cookies, so she <laughs> told me to make chocolate chip cookies. And so I made, um, I said, how many do you want me to make? And she said, well, make a few hundred, so I made a few hundred, and they were gone in like, I don't know, an hour. Yeah. Uh, so the next year I had to make a few hundred more, and <laughs> eventually it came to be t thousands, if not tens of thousands, of cookies. So it's it's not easy to do. It takes it takes almost a week. What was the total number? Th I don't know. I don't count them, but yeah. two, three or four thousand, anyways. Really? Yeah. And they're all gone. Yeah, they're they're all, they're all gone in two days. It's, it's it's incredible. See, that's that kind of community spirit um, that you've grown up with. I'm in, I'm interested in your your thoughts about that, the sense of sense of community. In here, Hopkinton does an ad. Your father responds. Mm -hmm. You're you you guys are in rel early. I don't mm -hmm. know what the population of Hopkinton was at that at that well, point, but it wasn't very big. Two thousand, maybe yeah. twenty five hundred. And yet now there's this. So you've seen this sort of spirit. Mm -hmm. How would you describe that? Well. Um, Hopkinton does have a lot of spirit. I mean, there's, um, look at look at the high schools that we're developing, and look at the uh, the, the the cultural center that we've developed, and you know, we, there's plans for revitalization. So, so we want to have we want to be shiny and new and, and pretty and esteemed. And I guess there's a, a, a marathon uh, museum being planned. Uh, so we have a lot. We have a great great town uh, as far as the state park goes and the golfing. There's lots of great resources here, and. Um, it's ours to, to really make it shine. You know, it's interesting. You used the word uh, revitalization, I think was the term you used, or vitalization. But there, is, uh, there are plans on the board, uh, uh, and, and people refer to it as a revitalization plan. I'm not so yeah. sure that's the right descriptor. Yeah, I think, uh, as, uh, as I recently heard, I think it should be called vitalization, not necessarily revitalization, because I'm not really sure downtown was really ever vitalized. Uh, basically, it was the Hopkinton drug, and then there was Colella's, and yes. there was a, 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 the package store across the street, and the hardware store, and now the, cl the cleaners. Um, and if you tried to build anything, you were, you, you, you were shut down. I mean, no, the, mm. the restrictions on trying to get a building permit were incredible. Uh, and now, 
Hopkinton's grown grown quite a bit. Yeah, it has, and I think it still has. Uh, according to the experts, still has room for additional expansion. Now how many how many people do you think they're gonna they're gonna try and put in here? You know, I hear twenty to twenty two thousand somewhere in that range, ultimately maxed out. Yeah. But the way building is now, I don't I don't know. I have. Is that a max? Is that realistic? I have no idea. I, I just I just don't know where the, how the roads are going to support it. That's so use again. Let's go back. The, 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 I'm, I'm I'm interested in in the development of the of the drugstore mm -hmm. and how it's changed over the years because you've lived it. Mm -hmm. uh, so you started out in a, in a relatively your dad started out in a relative small space. Yeah. Talk to, talk to us a little bit about the history and the development. Well, actually, um, it, it was, actually, there's a very, very interesting story. Um, as I started to get a little bit older, uh, maybe 14, um, I saw that there was economic issues. The, the, the drugstore was not, was not being very successful. And I had some ideas. And so I asked my father, could I um, uh, try my ideas out? And he would let me. He, I wanted to do some advertising. And uh, he wouldn't. He wouldn't let me just advertise because advertising was very expensive. We had to choose a scientific way of, of testing it out, <laughs> and it had a very small sample. And, and so that's how I started. I started by doing a little marketing and a little advertising, securing some of the products that we needed, uh, getting, making people aware that we had them at a reasonable price, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, you know, it worked, and it slowly built over the course of time. And as I got a little bit more successful, he let me do a little bit more and a little bit more. And eventually we started covering, you know, Hopkinton and Ashland and Upton and Milford and Southboro. And, um, and eventually now we have a, a national presence and I'd say probably more, more than 80% of our revenue comes from other states. Wow, it's, uh, it's, been, it's been a good story. So that development, there's a reason for that. That national well, reach. Well, we, we, we've been very lucky in uh, the sense that we've been able to take on some assignments from uh, some sp people like Dr. Richard Shoemaker. <clears throat> uh, we, we've developed things f uh, from Deidre Klinkhart. Uh, we do a lot of work with the chronic inflammatory response um, community. Uh, we're good at listening as to finding out what doctors and patients' needs are and then trying to meet those needs. So one of the things that we recently had a development of is uh, people with sinus infections. First of all, most people don't even know they have sinus infections. But um, sinus infections are really not in your body. They're attached to your body. And most of the time, oral antibiotics don't work. And a lot of doctors want to treat fungus infections and mold infections because that's what they're finding also up there. And um, when you use antibiotics with antifungals, resistance develops very quickly or I shouldn't say very quickly, but it, res it develops more quickly. And so we, our job was to find a way to treat mold and fungus without helping develop resistance and also get antibiotic effect and also biofilm busting effect as well as keep the product preserved so it's useful. And so we developed a product called ED8 disodium with a colloidal silver and it's being received very, very well. It's doing a good job. I'm not making any claims about it, but it seems to be helping the patients that the doctors are seeing. So that the development of that product came from an inquiry from a doctor? Yes. They yes. reach out to you. That's right. That's right. So how do how do you how does the word get out then that um, that you have this capability and that doctors are aware of this the capacity? It's it's, it's usually word of mouth. Um, huh. So, um, you know, we'll send a, we, you know, we'll tell a physician yeah. that we, uh, yeah, this is the answer that we have found f for you, and, you know, they'll test it out, they'll find out if it's he effective for that patient, and then they'll pass that on to another f physician, uh, it might be through a listserv, uh, because the doctors are all connected. Most of the physicians that we're working with are extremely invested in treating their patients. I mean, in, I'm talk we're talking the best of the best. I, I really do mean that. Um, and these doctors, uh, they just constantly working at teasing out these answers. Uh, and then they don't have an answer, they reach out to me. And uh, I don't always have an answer, but I've been lucky a few times. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And again, that whole, that whole loop is, um, is fascinating. Mm. In terms of your own training, though, how do you, you know, you just explained 
an area that you've focused on and you, 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 you hope you've developed a product, mm -hmm. uh, a product that's going to have some impact. How do you stay current? You, your, t your team, how do you stay current? Oh, there's, there's, there's journal articles that are coming out all the time. Uh, but beyond that, uh, every single day, uh, we're receiving phone calls from patients and physicians from around the country uh, trying to get answers to things that they don't know how to treat, uh, and especially resistance, uh, antibiotic resistance issues. Um, one of the things that you know, we've been working with physicians around the co country is like a lot of the medications that they take, let's say doxycycline. Doxycycline is notorious for causing stomach distress, notorious. Uh, most patients don't complete the therapy. So what if we could eliminate that distress, increase the effectiveness of the medication so we can reduce the amount of medication that they take or the frequency of medication so therefore we have more compliance because it doesn't hurt. And so we've been able to do that by doing things with liposomalization so we can increase the effectiveness, decrease the amount of medication that we give and decrease the frequency of medication. And um, it seems to be working. In terms of the business itself, percentage-wise, this new work that you're doing, compared to the, sort of the traditional uh, pharmacy, it's had to have shift, shifted dramatically. Yeah, it's, it's like 90% of the, of the business now. Wow. It's uh, the, 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 the traditional lick, stick, and pour. Uh, that's lick, stick, and pour. That's what we call it. Okay. So when we, we, we basically take, uh, when I take a medication out of one bottle and put it into another and make sure the directions are correct and all that kind of stuff, we call it tr traditional. We, we, I ca call it lick, stick, and pour. It's kind of demeaning, but that's what I call it. Um, but the compounding is where I, I really have my, get my most enjoyment. The, the, how big is the team? How, it, it, uh, the compounding department is uh, probably about 14, 15 people. Really? Yeah. yeah. How about total employees? About 40. See, again, I think these are, uh, these are sort of uh, what are basic facts to running the business, but that's, uh, that's a pretty substantial employee base. Yeah. It's, it, you know, we could trim it down, but, you know, we don't, we don't want to. I mean, these... We're looking, we're looking to develop more business. Not, we don't want to get rid of people. We want to add people and right. maintain people. Right. So it's a struggle. All retail bo all box stores are having trouble. It's a, it's a tough time. The, um, I was uh, listening to news the other night, and somebody asked the defense secretary what keeps him up at night, and, and his response was, no, I keep other people up. But what, what are the things that you spend your time thinking about? What... What, what keeps you awake? Um, well, it could be that particular day there's a problem, uh, a patient, patient trying to figure out a problem for a patient or a doctor. I mean, that's usually what keeps me up. Occasionally it's economics or, you know, uh, sometimes people leave uh, the store because uh, they, they go move on to another, another job. Those, those types of things. Uh, scheduling issues, the, 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 that's the small stuff. But most of the time it's thinking about, you know, how can we get, what is it that, I, what is it that I've overlooked that might serve that patient? That's, that's, really, that's really what, what keeps me up. In inquiring mind then, yeah. doesn't shut off. Yeah, yeah. I guess this, the, the, this whole healthcare discussion, uh, legislation in Washington, all of this sort of back and forth, uh, does that that has to have an impact on your on your business? Mm -hmm. It does, and um, uh, I really don't think that we need health insurance. Uh, we need health care. Health insurance is great for the health for the insurance industry. Uh, it's wonderful for the PBMs. These are the prescription benefit managers. Uh, they are literally adding hundreds of billions of dollars in expense every single year. Um, I don't find them to be good brokers. I don't think they're really serving the public's interest. And um, if you, if the public wants to save a lot of money, get rid of the PBMs. It's really that simple. Talk, d d define uh, health care. Health care. Health care to me looks like uh, a physician uh, seeing a patient, the patient uh, finding out what their needs are, uh, or what care they need, getting that care, 
could be pharmaceuticals, could be physical therapy, whatever, and the relationship is not broken or interfered with by anybody except the patient and the physicians and the professionals treating those people. As far as the economics of it goes and the insurance, it's something that needs to be addressed, but the way it's being addressed right now, it's not, it's not saving money, it's costing money. And um, it, the amount of excessive, abusive um, pricing that's going on, it's, it should be criminal. Yeah. You know, it's interesting that we can't get general agreement around that statement because uh, it seems logical. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the price increases, uh, a product called uh, Colchicine, or even tetracycline, everybody knows tetracycline. Tetracycline is an antibiotic. Um, we used to buy a bottle of 500 for $16 uh, for a bottle of 500, 500 milligram. A bottle of 100 now costs over $1,040. <laughs> but why? I don't get it. Somebody's making a lot of money. Right. It's got to be drug companies, bureaucracy that's built up around it, I would think. Follow the money. Yeah. That's it. Wow. Yeah. In terms of the, uh, the world that you operate in, mm -hmm. you, 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 you're used to this Hopkins thing and, 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 and building a business here, and now your business is expanded to uh, national. What kind of networks? What's that? That do you get involved in? Are the are the independent pharmacies not connected through an association, but more of the personal contact? Um, well, as far as the network goes, well, basically, I have created a network with another pharmacy out of Texas. Uh, it's called PD Labs, and uh, they're licensed in some states. I'm licensed in some states, and so when a physician calls in, one of the problems that we've had is. Uh, how do we get the product to the patient? If you're not licensed in that state, you can't ship into that state. That's a, that's a rule that tripped me up in the past. Um, so uh, what we need to do is we need to, well, we needed to network. And so now we have national coverage for uh, basically any compound that a physician is in need of, as long as it's not sterile compounding, because we, we don't do sterile compound. Wow. You know, it's, again, it, 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 there's more to this than meets the eye. It's not the, it, it's not the, the front entrance uh, on Main Street uh, that we're talking about here. We're talking about a business that's been built up now and has, uh, has this substantial network and is having an impact. And I will say one more thing, because safety is the number one thing that we need to talk about and always be attention, uh, pay attention to, and that's something that we're very good at. Uh, we have lots of great safety uh, procedures in place, and um, we're always vigilant about it. And it's very important in every inspection that we've had by the boards of pharmacies. Uh, we've gotten no demerits. Uh, everything's been pristine. You, you mentioned the word licensing before. Mm -hmm. How much, uh, d d d t tell us a little bit about that. Every state, uh, every state requires that you have a, uh, have a license to dispense medication into that state. Uh, and uh, each state can have a different set of rules. So uh, in Missouri, you have to know, uh, you have to know at what age you can sell somebody poison. It's one of those things I happen to remember about Missouri. I don't know why, but uh, it's just one of the quirks. I think it's inefficient. It doesn't make any sense to me, but uh, one of the rules we have to live with. What's the future look like? What's your, what are your hopes and aspirations? What are my hopes and aspirations? Um, uh, I'd like to find a cure for cancer, I guess. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, world peace and all that kind I of stuff. Yeah, but, I hope uh, you do. But I hope you do. In in all sincerity, uh, <laughs> I'd like to. Uh, I'd, I'd like to. I'd like to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm enjoying it. I, I really get a big kick out of hearing. Finding out answers. Uh, one of the things that we're working on is a, um, uh, a liposomal glutathione because a lot of people have to have to get glutathione IVs and it doesn't last for very long. So, so people had to be hooked up for like to a, to a bag for like a few hours. So is there a way that we can make this work for a longer period of time and not have them be hooked up and go on with their life? Uh, and I think we I think we might have an answer. I'm excited about it. So when you leave here this morning, 
What's the rest of the day look like? Go back to go back to work, and um, make uh, make uh, good medications, and uh, maybe go home and make a great meal. You never know. Well, there you go. And then finally, yeah. hope for Hopkinton. You're invested here, so. Uh, be nice to each other. Be uh, be patient. No, no. Everybody, everybody wants to be uh, cared for, and uh, it's a great place to be. So care for each other. You know, I appreciate um, the fact that you're willing to have uh, in uh, this more personal conversation uh, because I think it's helpful. Um, we we all run around and we don't take the time to slow down and really listen to other people. So we appreciate you taking the opportunity to talk with us this morning. Uh, and we'll see you again. There's Great. more to talk about. Okay. Thank you. Well, another example, interesting people doing interesting things at Hopkinton. Uh, we're thankful that HCAM uh, has focused on uh, these kinds of stories, and we'll look forward to uh, the opportunity to, uh, to find more interesting people and talk about more interesting things. Mm -hmm. My name is Margie Wiggin, and I want to invite you to join me for my new show, Character Matters, on HCAM. We're going to talk about why do people choose the behavior that they choose? Why do they choose to be good? We're going to hear from people in history. We're going to hear from local heroes who make great choices. And we're going to hear from some puppets who talk about things they've seen, and they're going to say, what? Did you see that? Yes, I did. Please join us. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get in a $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you.